Okay, right here is a 1935 Bucyrus Armstrong 26T. Now before we go and take a closer look at this rig, let's talk a little bit about the history behind this machine. Armstrong Manufacturing Company was formed in 1910 in Waterloo, Iowa. The company was the successor of several earlier drill manufacturers, all of which traced their ancestry back to Kelly Morgan and Company in 1868. By 1932, Armstrong had launched its first two self-propelled drill rigs, which were known as the number 26 and the number 29. Later on, in 1933, Bucyrus Erie acquired Armstrong Manufacturing Company, which by that time had grown to become a leader in the drilling industry. And the former Armstrong number 26 was renumbered and renamed the Bucyrus Armstrong 26T. Now, let's talk first about how this drill works. The 26T is what you call a self-propelling churn drill. And unlike a modern rotary or hammer drill, which uses rotary and down pressure to cut through the rock, a churn drill relies on impact to break the rock. The drill steel on this machine is operated by a wire rope connected to the reciprocating arm, which is driven by the drill's power plant. At the very end of the drill steel is the bit, and when engaged, the steel is continuously raised and dropped down the hole, which in turn breaks the dirt and rock layers, an action that is called churning. Water would then be manually poured down the hole by the operator to form a slurry. As the churning action continued, the pressure from the bit and steel falling down the hole would force the slurry upward around the bit which in turn would blow the cuttings out of the hole. And actually, the continuous up and down action of the steel and bit is how this drill got its name. The name churn drill originated from a butter churn, which works in a very similar fashion. So now that we have a general understanding of how this drill worked, let's take a closer look at it. The 26T was designed for drilling holes up to 6 inches in diameter. And if you look down here, at the end of the steel, you can see the bit. And these grooves that you see carved on both sides of the bit allow a path for the slurry to escape upward and exit when the bit is dropped down the hole. Here you can see the steel, and from here you can get a good view looking up at the derrick, which features Armstrong's patented rubber shock absorber at the derrick head, along with a rubber insulated spudding beam and heel sheaths, which help reduce wear on the steel line. From right here, you can get a good view of the operator station on the 26T. And if you look right here, you can see all of the hand levers and controls that will operate all of the drilling functions on this drill when the machine is in operation. And as you can see, the company who owned this 26T installed this metal shield over the operator station to keep the operator out of the elements when he would be running the drill. And if you look right here, on the side of this drill's frame, here you can see the original manufacturing plate that says Bucyrus Erie. You can see the model number and the machine number. You can see where it says 26T.
From right here, you can get a good view of the reciprocating arm, which is driven by the drill's power plant through a belt drive, which applies reciprocating action to the hoist rope, which in turn raises and drops the steel and bit down the hole. And from here, you can get a good overview of the machinery house on the 26T. You can see the narrow, individually linked crawler shoes, which allow this drill to work on uneven and rough ground surfaces. The 26T was also one of the first Armstrong drills to feature an all-steel frame mounted on self-propelling crawler tracks. Back in this time, drills like the 26T were often leveled using wooden planks or beams before the machine could start drilling. And if you look right here, on the side of this machine's house, here you can see the original porcelain sign that says, Bucyrus Armstrong. From underneath here, you can get a good view of the lower works on this drill. And as you can see, the crawlers on the 26T are chain driven. The 26T was available from Bucyrus Armstrong with either diesel, gasoline, or electric power. And on the back of this machine's house, you can see the two metal doors which would open up to allow the operator to access the engine, to start it, and or service it. The diesel and gasoline engine versions of this machine were both equipped with a reversing transmission, while the electric version utilized a variable speed reversing motor equipped with drum type controllers. The 26T remained in production until 1937, and by 1943, Bucyrus had phased out the Armstrong name. But there she is, a 1935 Bucyrus Armstrong 26T.